Well, hello everyone, my name is Prime and welcome back to this episode of ATS Showcases. And today I'm going to do my first look at the Western Star 57X, the brand new truck for American Truck Simulator. This thing is a beauty, my friends. I am really liking the design of this and it does actually have quite a few features as well. So for those who are not aware, the Western Star 57X is available at your in-game Western Star dealer. And when you go to configure your truck, you'll have two different options for the cabin type itself, the day cab and the 72 inch sleeper which is the one that i'm definitely using in this video because well it's kind of the ultimate truck and that's what i configured this truck for just to kind of show it off at its best now chassis we've got a few different chassis here a short uh, a short 6x2, and then we got 6x4 short, and then the long versions here as well. I'm using the long 6x4, again, top model. That's just the way I do things around here on these first looks. Engines, all Detroit here. Uh, we've got all Detroit powertrains here for the Western Star 57X. So I'm using the DD16 600 horsepower in the video. Again, top of the line, but there's quite a few options here for the Detroit power. Uh, so depending on what you want to do, and depending on what kind of truck you're trying to configure, you've got plenty of options there. Transmissions, we've only got a couple choices here. The Detroit uh, 12 speed and another Detroit 12 speed. To be honest, it's just the ratios that are different there and the differential. I mean, if you want to go into the technical specs, there are differences, but 12 speeds of what you got here in the truck. Interiors, we've got a few different options. You've got basic, uh, so I guess it's basic quarry gray we've got here. You've got charcoal bl black, which goes to the premium design, and then you've got premium quarry gray, and then the timber brown. Now, I am using the quarry gray, the premium version that is in the video. I, I really like the gray on the interior. It's not so... Uh, or at least brown in my eyes uh, and uh, tan. I, I do prefer the gray a little bit more personally. Now on the exterior, we got plenty of colors uh, that are stock, uh, but it, for me, if I scroll all the way down here, uh, we should be able to find, there it is, the Phoenix Rising skin. Uh, that is what I'm using today. This is the skin that is for the 57X. This is kind of the included, uh, I guess, new skin for that came with the truck free update, which is really nice to see. Exterior options, we got quite a few dots here, standard things, your bumpers, uh, that's the oversized low banner, of course we got that, paint, uh, you got just some options, I mean, I, I will not lie, it's not crazy when it comes to the option, and for some reason the arrow cap on this back tire is not uh, on, so I guess we can go arrow X. Now because this is a Daimler truck, we do have all the uh, arrow configurations uh, that are very, very similar uh, to the Freightliner Cascadias, and in fact, when we go into the interior there, especially when I start up the truck, you'll notice something about the dash and I'm just pretty sure uh, that's just something across the board now with a lot of the Daimler trucks correct me if I'm wrong uh, but you got all kinds of options especially when it comes to the aero this truck is a highway truck there's no way to get around that it's a highway and well tough truck I guess you can use it really anywhere but generally speaking it is designed for the open road nice highway driving and the inside again you've got your big screens navigation and when I turn on the display there in in the video itself uh, you'll be able to tell that it's really, I mean, the design of the dash is what we see in the new Cascadias. It's the way it is, but I actually don't mind the look of this truck overall, and you have quite a few options as well. For the sake of keeping this video a little bit on the shorter side, just to get this video out to you guys to see this beautiful truck in action, we are just here in Twin Falls, and we're heading up to Ketchum, hauling some fireworks in our uh, just kind of box trailer here that I've got the uh, skin as well, the Phoenix Rising skin for the trailer as well, which, I mean, does pair quite nicely with this truck, and it is quite sharp with those chrome accents. Me and my chrome, I know Prime and his chrome on his trucks, he just loves them, but you know what? It works, and that's the way it is. Now let's hop into the interior here and I'll start up the truck. You notice something about the dash there, my friends? Yeah, it looks very similar to uh, some of the other trucks we've got here uh, in ATS. And looking around the cab, well, it actually is quite nicely detailed. I love the table in the back and the, the star on the back wall does look really nice as well. And overall, the cabin is what you would expect from SES software. Really high quality and realistic, all the stuff we like. And I did add a few accessories, in, like a bag and the phone on the table and the tablet on the chair. Really big tech guy. You know, that's the way I am. So let's go ahead and roll out of here. Hopefully everyone is doing well. I certainly am. I'm very, very excited right now, to be honest with you. We've got Montana, as of recording this video, releasing in a couple days. We've now got a brand new truck to explore Montana in with this 57X. Oh man, oh man, I am I very happy. Prime is a happy Prime today. Uh, I am very, very happy to say um, that 
American Truck Simulator is just growing so fast and the things that are coming out for the game are just incredible as well. And I guess I didn't really say anything uh, too much about, you know, showing off the engine sound. Uh, it is eerily sim similar to some of the other Detroit engines we have in ATS. I think, to be honest, uh, we'll just go through this late. Uh, I want to keep this video moving. Um, I think that's something you can come to expect, to be honest, though, um, considering, well, just what the engines are. They're very similar across many of the brands. Uh, so that's the way it is. I mean, it's no surprise that uh, Freightliner trucks are owned by Daimler. Same here with Western Star. So that would be why the digital display is just a Daimler trucks uh, kind of standard, I guess you could say, uh, especially for the newer ones. Um, it's to, to be honest, I know some of you would like to see a little bit of variance, but it's what it is. I'm personally not going to complain. Uh, it still looks really good. Like, you know, just generally speaking, every truck does. Uh, and the, overall, the truck is quite sharp and this paint skin is truly lovely uh, on this truck as well. Okay, I guess we'll stop for this light, but uh, it's going to be a little bit of traffic central here, I think, getting out of Twin Falls, but then other than that, we should be fine. I will I will say I was a little bit surprised, actually, to see a blog post on the Western Star 57X, and just the fact that we got a new truck, I was honestly a little surprised about. I know there had been some rumors thrown out there and some, I guess, like tweets, apparently, something like that. To be honest, I don't really ever... Okay, I guess that Mustang's just going. Okay, whatever. It doesn't matter to me, I guess. I'm just driving straight. Um, besides that, I don't really follow that too much. I don't report on whatever that stuff. I guess you can look into it and all the teasers and stuff as you want. And we're going to hit another red light here, my word. I think we'll get on the highway soon. It shouldn't... Or at least part of a highway. And then I think it goes down to county roads. Long story short, I was a little surprised to actually see a blog post on it, considering how close we are to Montana. I am happy either way, to be honest with you. Having a brand new truck doing this showcase, and then I'm sure one of the next videos, if not the next video, will be my first look at the Montana DLC. Um, considering when you guys are watching this, hopefully on Wednesday, hopefully you guys are doing well. Well, the day after is when Montana releases, so I guess there you go. Um, that's that's kind of the timeline there and well it's i'm just happy to say that uh, i gotta get over here we are turning left technically um it's just a really exciting time to be part of ats uh, and, and be playing the game because we've got so many new things coming in one that being this truck and in montana so you will see i'm not gonna lie you will see this truck being used for a little bit here because it is of course the brand new truck and for the first look of montana I will be using the 57X. I don't think uh, that's a big surprise for those who've been around for a while. I do enjoy trying out the new trucks and kind of, uh, I guess you could say, burning them in a little bit. Uh, I like to kind of test them out, do different configurations of them, and just show some of the other potential. So I'm not saying that the next video will be using this same truck and skin. It probably will not. I don't generally like to uh, repeat trucks back to back, especially. Uh, but it will be probably a different configuration, maybe just a day cab and a different color and all that stuff and try some different configurations with the exterior accessories as well. And we'll just see how it goes. I'm sure it will go over quite well and I got sleeping off the line here. Well, I'm, to be honest, I'm not much of a racer in the sense of uh, trucking and I don't think you should be. Uh, be safe, kids on the road. Uh, but no, it's it's great to be uh, doing another or driving in another truck. Uh, I, you know, it is very similar, I guess, interior-wise uh, between the other uh, Western Star in the game being the 49X and then also the Freightliner Cascadia. To be honest, for a lot of you who are into uh, following the developments of many of these trucks, I don't think that really comes as too much of a surprise and considering what brands generally do and parent um, and overseeing brands do uh, and companies. I, I'm not too surprised to see the... Um, kind of mix i guess you could say between the trucks now saying that it does seem like and i i'm just kind of reading between the lines a bit between what the uh, the blog post said it seems like the configurations and the chassis stuff uh that are right out of launch here with uh, the 57x are just the way they are at launch it seems like there will be some additions later down the line kind of like what we saw uh with a 49x update there was an update to the for the western star 49x that brought some different chassis options and stuff like that 
So I am not. I would not be surprised if we see an update here to the 57X as well, just a little bit down the line, especially with changes to the model and considering the 57X released in real life not too long ago at all. Um, it's really cool to have that correlation between real life and ATS and the fact that they are both launching really close to the same time. So that's always neat. But I do have a feeling there will be uh, updates to the truck uh, in the near future here, considering we don't really have a mid-tier cabin. And I don't know if it's actually offered uh, in the 2023 technically model year of the truck. Um, I don't know if it's offered a kind of a mid-roof uh, cabin or if it's just day cab and then the sleeper, the 72-inch sleeper. So it'd be interesting to see what kind of stuff comes later. But the blog post did basically mention that as of right now, what we've got and what I showed in the little bit of the overview uh, there at the beginning of the video is what we've got at launch and for a little bit, but I'm sure somewhere down the line and kind of what the blog post was saying as well, there'll be new stuff coming, which I think we can all enjoy uh, when that does happen. Now look at this view. New truck, really nice skin. I have to give props on the designers there for this skin. Uh, in the paint job for both the truck and trailer look really really good beautiful oh don't hit the barrier um <laughs> be beautiful scenery as well in this map the idaho map is great and i mean montana is looking even better somehow i don't know how that's actually possible uh, but I mean, it is truly incredible to see uh, what SCS software is capable of and uh, the, both the model of the truck and of course the map is really nice. And I've always liked the Twin Falls area, especially when it comes to uh, that bridge there. It's that kind of ravine there that you cross. A uh, very expansive area. Uh, and it's a lot of detail when you uh, get that's a bit of a straight. Um, bit of a going the other direction into uh, Twin Falls itself. And that view is absolutely the surrounding area from the bridge. And it's a really, really lovely air, uh, viewpoint to see if you do get a chance. And I also did a cinematic uh, video as well when for the Idaho DLC uh, release. Of course, our, our customers expected soon game. I mean, I didn't sit there doing the intro for that long, I didn't think. Um, oh, well, it's <laughs> game, good old game. So I've got stuck at so many red lights, it's going to start constantly beeping at me. I, I don't think I'm going to be that late. It's not like I skipped time or anything. Um, I didn't, com I didn't completely cheat the system getting here. So I don't, I don't know what it's, I don't know what it's on about there. But I don't know. It, you know, some people may not uh, prefer the design of this truck. I don't blame you if you don't. Um, some people are not really into the whole highway kind of. I guess you could say crossover between brute American truck, kind of W900-esque design, and then the more highway trucks itself. So I know not all of you are a big fan of these kind of designs and the trucks in general, but to be honest with you, they actually did a really nice job with this truck. It's very clean looking. Uh, oh, what? I guess he was turning. There we go. Fresh accident in the... 57X <laughs> wouldn't be a prime simulation video if I didn't get in a bit of a fender bender. Well, the bumper is good on it. That's good. No dents. Well, I mean, you can't really dent it in ATS, but we won't go into that. That's a whole other video, a whole other topic in itself, a whole other prime rant. Uh, so let's go ahead and get a bit of a move on here because we've been stuck in the city for so long that I need to stretch the legs of this 57X and, to be honest, kind of get a move on here because I don't like to try and... I don't like to try and rush videos, and I definitely don't like to purposely do short videos just to, you know, try and get it out and done. Just try and get, you know, people, some people say you're doing it for views. Well, no, I'm I actually, I'm honestly not. Uh, I'm, what I'm trying to do is get it up so then YouTube can process, it, it process the video for however long it decides to process it for. Uh, and then what is the AI doing here? That is a great question. I mean, there's a train up there. Okay. I'm a, I'm a little puzzled why they're not using this lane, to be honest with you. Um, I'm considering, do I go through the 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 uh, intersection there? Oh, I'm just going for it. Why not? It's a, it's a four-way stop anyways. 
If I kind of block some of the lanes, I know I'm going to hear about it in the comment section, but I'm doing it anyways. Oh, it's actually not too bad, eh? Oh, I can... It fits a bit close to the barrier. Ah, oh, the standard Prime Simulation way. Wouldn't be... Wouldn't be, like, once again, a Prime video without it. Alrighty, let's move on here. I'm starting to, uh ramble on a little bit more than I should <laughs> but nonetheless I mean we've got some really exciting content here on ATS and around the community uh, to be able to, uh, to to see I know some uh, people have early access to Montana uh, which is really good for them and uh, really exciting to see some of the gameplay coming from there uh, but overall I mean it's just a wonderful time uh, and I've got a ton of content planned, especially for the Montana release. And now was this brand new truck. Something else to talk about as well. And uh, what well, was 1.45 recently just uh, released to everyone? You know what? This is amazing content. And the fact that 1.45, this update itself, the Western Star 57X update, are both entirely free. No strings attached. Free. Just F-R-E-E. -E free there's no there's no there's no way of getting around it and that's something i have always praised about SES software uh the fact that they don't nickel and dime you i guess you could say uh for every little thing every little dlc every little addition every update doesn't matter there are some companies out there that do it i won't name them but i think you know which ones i i personally just really enjoy the fact that once you buy ats ets2 doesn't matter any update that comes out, you are getting. Simple as that. Of course, the map DLCs and specific paint job DLCs and stuff like that are a little bit more specialty. Of course, it makes sense that you pay for it and stuff like that. But the overall game updates and uh, feature updates as well, it's not like just the updates are fixing bugs and stuff. They're legitimate feature updates. They bring new stuff in every update. Uh, of course, along with general bug fixes, but it's always something new. Uh, and that's something that's really, really quite nice. They're always adding something, always changing something, always updating an older section of the map, for example, is the revamps and reworks. It's always something that to look forward to with an update. I know some of you like to play with mods and kind of get annoyed with some of the quick successions between the various updates. Well, that's, I guess, unfortunate. Uh, you don't have to update if you don't have your game automatically updating. Uh, that's your choice there and which ones you want to update for and I guess it depends on the authors of the mods and how quick they are to update them uh, to the later versions but you know it's it's kind of the way it's the way it is and uh, I don't know why I slowed down there so much I thought there was a sharper turn than it actually was um, these updates are always something I look forward to and I guess considering the way that I run the channel here uh, it does make sense that I kind of let the game update and showcase the new stuff but it depends on what your preferences are. And at least with this, the version of the game is didn't really change. It just added um, a truck. So I guess technically the version changed, but nothing that would break other mods. And if they do break, that's probably more of a concern on the mod front that it's so sensitive to the version that it can't even just go between an update that just brings a truck and skin. That's a little sad, to be honest. But it does happen occasionally, but I think generally the mods are good for that. It's only the major update uh, changes that you'll notice uh, sometimes an issue. But it looks like we're pulling into our uh, delivery area here, which is quite nice. Get this video wrapped up, but we, and I decided, I guess I didn't mention earlier, we were doing an evening delivery today. That was our evening delivery, but at least we're, we still got lots of sunlight out here. Uh, so it's nice and easy to see this beautiful new truck or I guess handsome new truck I should say is I don't know if it's manly or I don't know how you want to I don't want to I don't want to really give it <laughs> it's, it's it's up to your it's up to your it's your choice how you want to call it um it just looks good let's just leave it at that no controversy let's just leave it at that I would personally say it's well I guess I'll interchange beautiful or manly it doesn't really matter to be honest it's a truck um Let's see if how it reverse here. But it just looks good. Let's just leave it at that. Alright, enough of my prime rambling. I've already been kind of going through this video enough and with Montana about to release and we've got a whole lot more to talk about then. But at least with this, I think it gives you a great idea about this truck and what to kind of expect with it. And of course, you could try it out as well. Uh, but if you don't own an ATS and you're trying to consider if you do, um, if you want to, 
get ATS. Well, this is a great time to do it, and um, it just depends, especially with a DLC release. Generally speaking, um, the games will actually come on sale, uh, and that was actually a beautiful reverse, if I say so myself. Um, I'm, there we go, button wasn't working. Lovely stuff. When buttons don't work on it, you just stare at the, at the back wall. Actually, it's like perfectly centered. A little pat on the back there. I am quite happy with myself. Put the parking brake on. I forgot to do that. But thank you all so much for watching. What a truck. What a beautiful truck it is. Just looks so good. And I mean, you know what? Engine sounds the way it is. Uh, I'm sure I, I'm sure the yeah, modding community will get their hands on um, <laughs> on some of the Cummins mods here. And maybe even some of the uh, mods that are already out there will be updated to include this truck. And I'm sure they will... Uh, I'm sure they'll uh, turn something out here for those who really want a different engine sound. But, you know, it's not that bad, uh, in all honesty. And, I mean, there are a lot of similarities between the 49X and the, you know, some of the other Daimler trucks in the game. But that is to be expected, considering, well, they are kind of owned all by the same company. And it's kind of the trend that's going for it. And, well, it's Western Star versus Western Star and the X lineup as well, so... I don't, I don't think there's too many surprises there, but nonetheless, thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.